so before that, I think so yesterday just we have an, a brief idea about the data cap uh, capturing solution. So, so what are the functionalities um, we're going to use in the data cap application? So today, just we're going to discuss about that software architecture and components in the data cap. Okay. So here, just be uh, uh, software architecture and components. So we actually in the IBM data cap, we have a number of components. So there are uh, there are the so there are the number of components they are linking together. So the, all the components will process a batches into into data cap. So each components have a, each a, a individual roles to process the batches and uh, in the in the in the data capturing solution. So here uh, I'm not going to discuss about the all the components which in the data cap. Just I'm going to discuss about the few of the components so which we are using uh, in the data cap to process a batches. So that just you can understand that the entire uh, uh, the software architecture. So after that, we will discuss about that another components. So which which uh, which we are using for the uh, and uh, monitoring and deploy. So there are the number of components included in the data cap. So some of the components are using for the data cap application, and some of the components using for uh, the application monitoring and deployment. So and, and for deployment. Okay. So today, okay. just I am going to discuss about that. What are the main components we are using for a processing a documents into a data cap? Are the what are the components we are using for a data cap? Okay, so before that, so here just we have a a, a, a different components here. So we have a, a rule runner service. So it is the one of the component, and I am talking about the thin client here. So like IBM Content Navigator. So basically, okay. we can use that uh, a, both the both the clients like thin client and thick client. So here I am going to discuss about that ICN. So this is the same for uh, a thin uh, thick client as well. So in the thick client, if you can use thick client, so that is called a data cap desktop. So if you are using a, your business using a, a thick client means, so they are not using that uh, a ICN that is IBM Content Navigator. Okay, so for this software architecture, so I am going to show you that the ICN, so that is a, a called a thin client. Okay, so apart from this, so we have a different databases here. So that is called admin database and engine database. So these are the databases we require for any of application. We can create any application for any business. So these are the uh, these are the mandatory databases. Just we need uh, we need for any 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 kind of data cap application. Okay. So and okay. I am talking about the data cap server. So it is called data cap server manager. So this is the one of the components in the da data cap. So so we will discuss about the each and every one here. So and other one is the double time service. So the double time service is nothing but a web taskmaster service. So here, if we can talk about the double time service, the double time service in the form of two types. So one is the window service, the another one is web service. So before a data type portion 9.0, we have only a double time service as a web service. Like just we can host that application means web service in that IAS, then just we can use that. So after the 9.0 version, so we have IBM has provided the double time service as a window service as well. So if you can use that the services in the window system, just you can start and stop the service for you for, for your application usage. Okay. So these are the mandatory components just which we can discuss here in the software architecture. And the, uh, the, in the next, just we can we can talk about the each and everything of the each and every component. Okay. So okay. here. Here the data cap server, nothing but it is also a window service. Okay, so it's also a window service. If you can install the data cap uh, software in your server, so automatically the data cap server, uh, data cap server will be installed as a service in your system. And the double time service, as we discussed, there, the double time service has the two possibilities. If you want to host the double time service as a web service. You can host it into IAS. Uh, uh, either just if you want to use the double time service as a window service, and we can also install that service in in your Windows system. Okay. Okay. So here I'm talking about that a rule runner service. So it is a server manager, rule runner server ser server manager. So basically, it will run a local system in your Windows service in in, in Windows servers. It's like a Windows service. Server. Okay. So he then so this is the data cap application for example. So 
the data cap application is completely decoupled with that all the components your application the data cap application is decoupled with that uh, uh, all the components okay so, means sorry and decoupled with all the components in the sense i didn't get that yeah decoupled means so the, the data cap application will interact with the, all the components will interact with all the components all the components uh, okay but, okay so your application if you create an application the application whenever if you want to use that application whenever you process for example if you want to process any batch into data cap the data cap application will interact with the, all the components over the data cap system like what are the what are the components were discussed before like these are the components so your application will interact with all the components okay okay now we can see that how the application will interact with all the components okay so just okay. i am taking icn client icn is the data cap client here and just i am using a rule runner service and here we can see your data cap application here mm -hmm. okay now we can see the data cap application as a separate component uh, 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 separate and icn as a separate client and rule runner service as a separate component here so now we can see how the all the components will interact and also we discussed about that uh, a workflow okay just i'm talking about the simple workflow here mm -hmm. that is the for example if you can talk about a main job so if you create a, a main job in your application that is the simple workflow if you can take any kind of application the workflow remains same so just i am just i want to discuss about a simple workflow here that is the scan profiler and verify and expo okay so okay. basically this scan already we discussed yesterday the scan is the one of the component so it it, it is also executed by rule runner service and also user can manually upload the document using the icn client okay okay uh -huh. the scanning process it might be a user you, you doing by user manually or either we can also process the scanning task from the rule runner service now i will tell you that how the rule runner uh, rule runner service will work there uh, just a minute like you will be sharing this particular uh, presentation with me just you can see we can share the record so that you can understand okay okay so yeah, yeah. so just i'm talking about the simple workflow here so we have created a workflow in our data cap application that is hmm. scan profiler and verify and export okay the scan it might be a, it might be a from uh, user manual task i mean user will do manually means they will scan the documents and uploading a documents into a data cap system data cap application using by I, ibm content navigator and the other thing is verification verify the verify is nothing but so I, as we discussed yesterday so the verification is uh, doing by users manually for example if any any wrong data captured by data cap the user will do manual verification that is called verify okay these are the two tasks will be uh, done by uh, a user in using icn icn i don't content navigate okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so now we have a, 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 a your application data cap application a must have admin database in engine database okay mm -hmm. these are the databases is mandatory two databases so one it is called admin database the another database is called engine database okay so what are the information available in admin database and what are the uh, data available in engine database okay in admin database in your application what are the workflow you have created that information will be stored in admin database and what are the security or like uh, user permissions and privileges has been created in your application that user information also will be stored in admin database like okay. the workflow information and security kind of information and user information if you have created any groups for uh, your application the groups information and permissions and privileges will be stored in admin database okay uh -huh. okay so uh -huh. if you can talk about the engine database in engine database all kind of batch information for example if you have created any batch in your data cap application that batch information will be stored in engine database like what workflow you have created if you have created a, 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 a batch in our, in our application so which job and which task we have created and what is the status of each task or what is the status of each batch 
and statistics and batch queuing information is available in Jin database. So if you have created any batch, any batch, the whole the batch information is available in Jin database. Okay. Okay. So this is that uh, the this this the, this is the reason just we have admin database and engine database. So for example, in your admin database, it's not related in uh, you uh, it's admin database. We are not storing any data related to your application. Okay. So what are the information we are uh, storing in admin database means that is administration related. That might be a workflow, that might be a security, that might be users and groups and permissions and privileges, that kind of information, just we are storing in admin database. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. So whenever you are moving your application, for example, if you have created an application in SIT environment or development environment, if you are moving that application into a, a UAT or any higher environment, so you must move the admin database uh, information to the UAT or production. Because your application related data, they are related to administration, like workflow information, security information, and permissions, privileges information available in admin database means. So whenever you are moving your application into a higher environment, you need to, you must need to uh, move that admin database as well. Okay. But but is that always possible to move like that because in the production the security and users might be different now yeah users might be different so whenever uh, you are use, uh, uh, creating right so after that just maybe you can create that uh, groups and users information got it so for example if you have admin database you are moving to uh, evaluate to production okay, okay? if you are uh, you, if it might be production users may different just we can delete the UAT users and you can create a production users directly in the, in, in the production. You have access. Okay. Uh -huh. so no one, I mean, only administration can access that uh, user information and maybe you just, you can create a user as group. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. But workflow information should be mandated to move from uh, UAT to production because the workflow is remain same for the every NRA. Yes. Yes. As it is related to replication. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So then, just I'm talking about that uh, a double time service and data capture. No, no. Like what about the engine DB? So engine database we are storing only batch related information. Okay. So we need not right. move. Yeah, because uh, maybe uh, the SAT uh, development environment just we have creating more batches, test batches that is not required to move UAT, right? Yes. So maybe UAT data is not required to move production. So that's why just no need to move that engine database related data. Okay, okay. Then, so now we can see that all the components in place here, that is the data, data cap application and admin database and engine database and double time service. And we have a rule on the service and we have created some kind of workflow in our application. So in IC. Okay, so now I'm coming with the data cap service. So basically the data cap server is that one of the heart of the heart of the component for our entire data cap architecture, because using the data cap server only the authentication and authorization will be happy. Okay. So whenever you log into the system, data in, whenever you're trying to log into the application, the data cap server will authenticate and authorize the users. Data cap server in the sense. Sorry. Uh, data cap server means like what what do you mean by like data cap? like where we have installed data cap yeah wherever we are installing the data cap automatically the data cap server will install so that is that is the one of the component okay uh -huh. so it's kind of a service like it's kind of a, a, a data cap service uh, window service uh -huh. okay so it is, is, is it is in the form of service so whenever if you want to log into your application the data cap server must be started because it's a service. You need to start the service first, data cap server manager. Oh, okay, okay. So if you are not started the data cap server means you cannot, any any user cannot log into that your, your data cap application. Yes, yes. Because it is that service, it is the heart of the comp heart of the heart of the component data cap architecture. So it will it, it is only authenticate authorize the users. If okay, the service okay. was down, the any user cannot log into the data cap application. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is the main thing about the data cap server. And I'm talking about the double term service. 
the double time service is that uh, so one of the service so using the double time service only we can integrate the data cap application into any other third party tools for example you are using the icn as your your, your data cap client if you want to integrate a data cap application into icn the double time service will act as a mediator mm -hmm. okay for example your, your your business want to integrate data cap application into icn for user interface the data cap double time service will act as a mediator so by using the data cap double time service only your icn will interact with the data cap application okay even if the double time service was down you are unable to log in your application using icn mm -hmm. okay. the double time service only will act as a mediator between your data cap application and ibm content navigator okay mm -hmm. if you want to create your application integrate your application into uh, icn so then only you can do number of things you can create users and you can create a workflow and you can create groups and anything anything any anything related to administration part just we are using that icn so it is it, it is communicated with the double time service the double time use via double time service only you can make the changes in your data cap application okay mm -hmm. related to administration information like users workflow and everything okay. so that's mm -hmm. why just i am showing here the workflow as interacting with your ibm uh, icn ibm content navigator client okay you can see the workflow in your icn only mm -hmm. and before that so before icn we have a tm web that is taskmaster web application so before that we are using the taskmaster web application for any uh, all data cap application now we are going to deprecate in the latest versions the, there is no tm web uh, no longer available tm web for data cap for which version onwards like i am using right now 9.1.8 it is available it's available it's going to be deprecated oh okay okay so like everything will be everything will be managed where yeah we can able to we, we can manage manage everything with the tm web uh, tm web dot net as well but when further releases they are going to deprecate the tm web data completely okay so instead of tm web which one will be using then so instead of tm web we are using the icn ibm so, like, so like that becomes a mandatory you know like afterwards like whoever who is using that cap then they must be having icn also no yes in future releases yes as of now like data cap as an individual product can be installed and used right without filenet ah uh, yes without filenet we can use but you you are saying like after the next release onwards only if there is filenet the user will be able to use data cap no 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 the icn is different filenet is different right ah uh, okay but uh, so okay, okay. I, icn is only ibm content navigator for user interface for data filenet is different okay okay uh huh filenet is just storing the document into a file that is different uh -huh, it's okay. icn for only icn but for... Like we we always deploy icn over cp you know a separately it can I... be done yes separately for example we have a we have a icn filenet cp and everything as a package for example yes. and mm -hmm. also we have a content manage i mean case manager and all yes so you can use your your uh, navigator for data cap as well Uh, separate okay. using that double time service uh -huh, uh -huh. so we have a icn i mean content navigator case manager and cpe so everything as a package for example so using okay. the using navigator also you can integrate that data cap application into your navigator separate uh -huh. so there there is no dependency with that case manager and there is no dependency with the file okay mm -hmm. just the icn for user interface that's it. okay uh -huh. so you, using the icn we are not retrieving any data from the file net right just we are using the data cap uh, icn for data cap user interface that's it okay okay so like it will be from 9.1.9 onwards or like uh, after other versions so actually the icn has introduced uh, from 9.0 onwards okay but the why the ibm has not deprecated tm web dot net still mean there are the number of businesses still they are using the tm web dot net Mm -hmm. actually they are already uh, uh, they are addicted to tm web dot <laughs> okay because, because they are not going to change their process in in that uh, icn content navigator to content uh -huh. navigator okay. so that is the reason so they are not uh, still they are not deprecating so it's continuing from 9.0 9.0 onwards 
but as per ibm recommendations they are not, they are going to deprecate in future releases but we don't know so when they are going to uh, deprecate okay but actually oh, okay okay yeah but compared to tmweb.net so we have uh, a rich user interface ricen is a rich user interface okay okay so so and also just we have another advantage using icn so what are the some of the businesses so they want to retrieve some kind of data from the file net using the icn so for example so they are using the icn for data cap so they are exporting a document into file net and the same time they are going to use that uh, they are going to use icn to retrieve the data from the content navigator using the cross repositories okay so for example the, the customer they are using that um, icn for the data cap so they are they are also they, they also can use that uh, icn uh, to uh, to get that uh, documents from the file net so for that advantage for these advantages so some of the business are they are migrating that uh, migrating uh, their applications from tmweb.net to ic but uh, i have a doubt now mm -hmm. like these are not synchronous like tmweb like whatever the applications may be which we made will not be visible in icn no yeah, yeah you can uh, the, the application will be visible so whenever you are you are, you are, you are integrating your data cap application into icn using the double time circuit you can see the all the applications Okay. Uh huh. So, so like that, in, the, in that case, the application will be visible in TM Web as well as in ICN, no? Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I thought like a separate configuration is needed for ICN. Application is visible, hmm. but the related to, for example, if you configure your application to TM Web.net, so for the verification panels and that, you are using that some kind of ASP .NET pages, like .dot ASCX pages, pages, .dot ASCX pages. right mm -hmm. mm. but coming to that uh, icn so it will you, uh, uh, coming to the icn the all that uh, 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 means uh, the icn uh, ibm content navigator so they have the de developed based on that uh, java script okay and also uh, so now we are going to release that the node js and uh, they are using some kind of plugins like uh, you know the dojo those are the scripting languages oh, i have heard about it yeah. no, don't so have much idea about it mm, so those languages they are using that uh, in the icm icm content navigator developer uh -huh. so if you if if you, if you if you if you configure your application to icm but okay but you can see that batches and you can the applications are all visible in tm tmweb.net but you cannot open that in the uh, tmweb.net because the configuration is different Okay. Okay. Uh huh. You can see the batches. You can see that workflow and everything in using TMF data. Even though if you configure that application to ICN, but mm -hmm. you cannot process the batches uh, using the TMF data. Okay. Uh mm huh. -hmm. If you configure your application into TMF data net and also you configure that application to ICN, okay. If you are using mm -hmm. the TMF TMF data net, so you can see that all the information using the ICN, but you cannot process the batches using ICN. Okay, so either only one of it can be used. Both cannot can be, be used simultaneously. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. For example, so I can say this way. So if we want the business want to use, so you have a different different groups. Okay. Yes. Okay, different different groups. So some of mm. the group are using the TMWeb dot net uh, since from long days. Hmm. But you have onboarded ICN to the same business. Hmm. So what you will do? You can create your your separate workflow for the IC. Okay. Okay. For the world users, they can use that separate workflow for tmweb.net. You can create the same workflow for the ICN, different work. Uh huh. So that you can you can configure the ICN uh, ICN page ICN pages for your workflow. You can configure that the yes, that tmweb.net uh, uh, pay uh, I mean uh, panels for your uh, tmweb.net users. Okay. So that you can the uh, so uh, this way you can manage it. Uh huh. You got it right. Yes, yes. Yeah, for tmweb.net, you can create. For example, you can see this is the work scan, profiler, verify, export. This is the work. For mm -hmm. example, if you can take uh, this is the ICN job. In the ICN job, I have this this uh, this uh, work. So you can create a tmweb.net job 
So in that you can create a scan profile, verify, and export. So for TMWeb.net, you can you can configure that uh, TMWeb.net related verify panels. And for uh, ICN, just you can create uh, IBM Content Navigator panels. For so the both users can use that uh, ICN and TMWeb.net for the same application. But for ICN, we will be making a copy of the uh, copy of the application also. No, it should be both two separate applications, right? No, no, not separate applications. Separate workflows. That's it. I mean, uh, separate jobs. Okay. Ah, uh, separate jobs. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, like that, just you can manage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now, just I'm going to uh, create a. Uh, uh, just I'm going to create a batch using ICN. So in okay. the batch, batch means I just I'm using this, the ICN job for example scan. Mm -hmm. Using scan only, I can create a job. Okay. okay. So mm -hmm. whenever you log into the system, for example, mm -hmm. Niket is a user, he's trying to log in. So whenever you're trying to log in, the ICM is interact with the double time service because the double time service is the mediator for your data cap application and IC. Okay. So mm -hmm. that ICN will interact with the double time service. So is there any work for me? Okay. Then what mm -hmm. the double time service will do? The double time service will interact with the data cap server first because the data cap server only will authenticate the users and authorize the users. Okay. Okay. The data okay. cap server will get the request from the double time service. So whenever you are logged into the ICN system, the ICN requesting to the double time service, the double time service is requesting the data cap server for authentication and authorization. Okay. The okay. data cap server, what will do? The data cap server will interact with the admin database. So what are the user logged in? Is that user information available in admin database server? Because the, all the admin, uh, user information available in admin database. Mm -hmm. Okay. So whenever the ICN requesting uh, user logs into the ICN, ICN is interact with, uh, interacting with the double time service. The double time service interacts with the data cap server. The data cap server interacts with the admin database. The particular user information available in admin database or not. Mm. If user is there, for example, Niket user is there. Mm. So, what kind of permissions he have? Okay. That also the permissions and privileges information available in admin database. So that the same time the data cap server will check that the particular user Niket is trying to log into the uh, data cap system. So, the uh, what kind of permissions privileges he have? So that kind of information it will check into the admin database. Okay. If the user is there and he had the proper permissions and privileges, then the admin database will uh, give that response to the data cap server. So we have uh, main job uh, permissions, main job scanning permissions, for example. Okay, it mm -hmm. will return, it will return to the particular user have, what are the permissions, privileges you have. So it will return to the data cap server. Mm -hmm. Then, so once the user logged in, right? So you, for example, we have a scanning permission, you scanned a batch. Okay. It means the batch is created. So once the batch is created, the batch information will be stored in the engine database. Mm -hmm. That would be done by data cap server managers. Okay. Okay. The data mm -hmm. cap server will insert a record into engine database. The particular user has created a batch in the main job. That is batch number something. So it mm -hmm. will be stored into engine database. Okay. So for okay. example, the engine database has stored the data. So and it will uh, uh, give the re response to data cap server. The uh, particular record has been inserted. The particular in the so batch is created uh, by the particular user, and this is the state of the each batch. So the batch batch states mm -hmm. that information will be stored into the engine database. Then, so once the database information is uh, is stored in the engine database, the status will be updated in your data cap client. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can you can see that batch information. In the your data cap client that is IBM Content Now, you can see that batch information. Mm -hmm. So what what job and what this, what status and what are the what tasks we have created. So that kind of information we can see into the uh, IBM Content Navigator UI panel user user panel. So that is called job monitor. We can talk about. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the job monitor, we can see that all the batch information is nicely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So once scan is completed. Once scan is completed, you have scanned a batch. Once you scan it, the information will be stored into the engine database. 
that data you can see into the your data cap client in ic mm -hmm. okay now scan is completed in the my workflow then my task next task is profile okay the profiler means so it is the task it will execute some kind of logic into your application your data cap application so that would be executed by rule runner service so now you uh, can what, see what the profiler will be doing profiler will the profiler is nothing but profiler you have configured some kind of logic for your application into your profiler task okay okay for example yesterday you have discussed it right scan yes, yes. you can uh -huh. scan the document the profiler we can do the page identification image enhancement mm -hmm. page identification image enhancement for example okay once scan once you scan the document just we are going to do a page identification or uh, image enhancement and recognition means extracting the data mm -hmm. from um, extracting the data using profile okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so this would be executed by rule runner service so what rule runner service will do will configure so this is my workflow just i am going to execute profiler from background so no need any user intervention to execute the profile okay uh -huh. so once the scanning is completed the rule runner will take the prof, uh, take care of the profiler so which we configured the rule runner service will execute the profile so what are the logic we are going to execute in our application mm -hmm. okay the okay. rule runner service will run individually in your your system it will try to fetch the batches from the engine database because batch information available engine database so whenever we trying to fetch that information from the engine database data cap rule runner service also will interact with the data cap server for authentication and authorization and it will get the list of the batches from the engine database what are the batches and what are the tasks i going uh, just i need to execute from the rule runner service Thank you.